Okay, one. Okay, I think we're work. I think we've figured it out now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Grant, and uh, I'll be leading the service this morning. It's a wonderful day today, isn't it? As we celebrate uh, what I guess is the certainly the most important event in the Christian calendar: the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin by reading to you from uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning to acknowledge you as our risen, conquering Saviour and Lord. 
as the one who has defeated the last enemy of death and under whose authority all things now exist. We pray that you would help us this day to lift our hearts in praise for all that you have done for us, for taking our sins and suffering the just judgment of your Father against them, for rising triumphantly from the grave and giving us the gift of your Spirit. Father, may we never again live as if you are dead, but may your resurrection power energise and refresh our spirits and our lives, as well as our praise and worship of you now. Amen. Let's stand and sing our first song, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. we thank you for the wonders that you have brought, not with your life, but with your death, and that that is not the end. We praise you with all we have, and we cast our mind on your cross, and we celebrate the victory today in you rising. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my saviour on that cursed tree Thank you. 
His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone I please ask you to remain standing and we're going to say the creed together. Uh, this is a confession of our faith which has been said from the very early days of the Christian faith. So let's join together in the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, uh, welcome to church today and to Easter Sunday. It's great to see you here. I'm seeing some faces I haven't seen for a while, people back from other places, people recently married. Hi, Will and Anna Lily. Nice to see you guys. And um, uh, great to have you with us today. My name's Jim. I'm the lead pastor here at St. John's. But today I am um, I'm pretending to be Linda. Uh, Linda, our uh, children's pastor, is leading a group of people up at uh, Katoomba at Easter Convention up there. And so I'm leading the kids team today, and Ben is preaching. Um, and we have a new kids team. Uh, as you know, we've, we've made some changes in Sunday mornings. You can see new seats and beautiful floors and things. But we've also changed the way we do kids ministry. And we have three teams um, over a four-week period each leading our kids. And today's the first week of Team C. And I really think you need to get a better name. Team C is really boring. So I'm going to call Team C. And they just can't wait like Emily. Can't wait to come out the front. And, uh, but come on, Team C, Hamish, where are you, Charles? Come on, Sasha. Here we go. We've got a few people away, but this is the mob. Please come up, come up. Where are you, Hamish? Gosh, the most handsome of us is not here. Uh, Ken Laird, where are you, Ken? Hi. Do I have to call you out by name, Mr. Laird? Everyone, that's Ken. Point at him, look at him. The guy trying to evade all your attention. These are the leaders who lead our kids for the next four weeks. We're so thankful to what is really not just, um, uh, you know, now eight or nine people leading kids, but a group of, you know, close to 20 people. Uh, is that Gilles Lambert, I see? Bonjour. To you? That was French, Gilles. I hope you noticed. <laughs> and for the Greeks here, let me say Christos Anesti. And I have nothing else on out. Uh, can you thank this mob who care for the kids in our church? Uh, I'm going to pray for us as we go out. Um, kids are going out to a special program today, a special Easter program. Toast is in church for the sermon, but they'll be going out. When a bunch of teenagers sidle out later, they're going out to hide a bunch of eggs, not in your mouths. Hide a bunch of eggs. And then the chaos kids will be going out at the end of chaos and, um, and finding the eggs. And, that, and then when they're full of sugar, we'll hand them back to you. Let me... <laughs> Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for the children of this church, that children are loved in your kingdom and uh, mean so much in your kingdom and teach us much about your kingdom. And uh, we thank you for these things. Uh, we pray for um, everyone going out to chaos today, that power of Jesus' resurrection will be present in our lives and the, the lives of these children. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we go out, kids, you can head on out now. Um, you should say hello to someone, introduce yourself to someone nearby, say hi, that would be great.
Well, good morning again, everyone. Lovely to hear everyone chatting and being friendly. Um, we've got a new tradition. I guess it's not a tradition if it's new, is it? We've got a new thing that we're doing, um, which is interviewing the Bible readers, just so we can get to know people a little bit better. And this morning, Georgia is reading for us. Uh, so, Georgia, I'm going to ask you two questions. Uh, first of all, can you just tell us about any Easter traditions that you've grown up with? Um, my parents, I think, when I was little, I have just memories of going to church, just at those important, you know, Christmas, Easter, weddings, those are probably not funerals as a kid. Um, but one thing we did as a family was come to the Royal Easter Show. So I'm from the country in Armidale, but we would come down to Sydney every Easter, do a 10-hour drive probably back then, um, and go to the Easter show. My dad was a member, so we would just go to the show. We would drive to... There's the bit of section between the light rail and Centennial Park, near Moore Park there. You could park down there. My dad would just drive up and park under a tree for free. Like, it, that's how old I am. <laughs> and then we would go to the show all day, from the tickets open to when the fireworks went, and then drive back to Hornsby, and then do it again for four days over the whole weekend. And then I used to work at the Easter show when I was at uni, selling show bags. And then I took my, <laughs> took my son when they'd moved to Homebush, but I kept going back to the Moore Park family show. I haven't been for a while, but... Very good. Yeah. Excellent. That's very good. I can't remember the last time I'd been either. What's your f supplementary question? Um, you didn't tell me that. No, I know. This is an extra one. What was your favourite part of the show? What, what did you like to see As the most? Yeah. I really liked going to the little animals and watching, you know, the ducklings run up a slope and then jump into the water and do a huge slope. <laughs> very nice. I used to love the chooks. I still love the chooks. I think they're very interesting, the chooks. Um, can you tell us about your experience? Because I mean, today is a special day. A lot of people come to church uh, visiting relatives um, and they might not be familiar with this church and what we do from week to week. So I wonder if you can share as a regular participant of this church what your experience of church is throughout the year for you and your family. So as I said before, when I was growing up, I think we only went at those times, but it's much more um, than that for me now. So it's not even just Easter Sunday, it's not even just Sunday. Um, we say church as family here, and that's really true for me in my experience. Um, some of you have heard me say before that I started coming here when my child was just a baby in a pram. My, my husband doesn't come to church, so I really was looking for a place that had a great kids program and a family that could help me bring my child up in Christian life. It's a real, um, it's a real basicness <laughs> to being a Christian, which is just reading the Bible, trying to work out how it applies in your life and then doing that as you live your life. And there's a real comfort in doing that with family here at church, with everyone at all those different ages and stages. And, you know, my kid's now 13, he's in the youth group, he's going to be giving out eggs if he hasn't eaten them all. And I've really valued that journey together as a family. Great. Thanks so much, Georgia. Okay. I'll let you do the read. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew, chapter 28, verse 2 to 15. And it's, I've got different glasses, page 999 in the, they're not pews anymore, in the church Bibles. And I'm just going to find it on my app because I didn't bring a Bible up. So Matthew 28, verse 2 to 15. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. 
There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and get you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated, widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. And now please turn to page 1065 if you have a Bible with you. And our key words for today. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here join us on this wonderful Easter Sunday. My name's Ben. I'm the Youth and Evening Church pastor here on this day where he is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, huge privilege to be able to think through uh, Easter today and think through the fact that, he's, that Jesus is risen and that uh, he offers eternal life to each and every one of us. We've been doing a little series over the last uh, week or so where we did part one last Sunday where we looked at God so loved the world, thinking about the world and what it is and what John meant by it and how amazing and unbelievable that that is. And then on Good Friday, we looked at for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, thinking through the costly nature that uh, God has towards us and, and the wonderful sacrifice that he gives us in Jesus. But today we're thinking about eternal life. So how about we pray and ask for God's help? Let's pray. Our Father, it's a time of year where things can feel busy. We might have things in our minds of something that we're cooking back at home or thinking through upcoming plans or coming to the end of the first quarter and whether we're going to make different quotas and all these things that are, are costing us. Father, we pray that you would just quiet those things now in our hearts and in our minds, that we might better come to know and see your son, Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. Do you ever get sick of how quickly things fade? One of my favorite shops in Maroubra, since my wife uh, Ash and I uh, moved to here in Maroubra, is Mary Kay Flowers in the Junction. It's one of the best florists I've ever seen, and it's in a mall, which is, you often think that the nice florists are tucked away somewhere, but this one's right in the mall next to the travelator, and it always just has wonderful, beautiful flowers, and you can always count on them to walk in, grab a stunning bouquet, and give it to someone that you love. You invest this chunk of money into it, and the vibrant colours just lift up the room, they, they light it up, the fragrance fills the air, and it makes every moment just feel a little bit more special. But then, in a few days, you start to see the flowers start to droop a little bit. Maybe some of the petals start to fall. They wilt. These vivid colours start to sort of fade a little bit. The water starts to turn stagnant, and all those nice smells that once filled the room now start to smell a little bit off. It's a small everyday example, but it's a profoundly symbolic true uh, it's a it's a profoundly symbolic thing that that tells us about this larger truth that we all grapple with everything around us no matter how beautiful or cherished seems to have this expiry date take technology for example there might be this gadget that you've been thinking about for a long time you've been watching these videos, reviews, and things like that, and finally you get your hands on it, and you revel in all its newness and capabilities, but in a year's time, it becomes obsolete. 
and it needs to be replaced again, or overshadowed by a newer version. Or maybe even you think about the kind of memories that you're trying to hang on to, moments of joy and celebration, achievements, and we freeze them in photographs, hoping to hang on to them. But they too fade over time. Might be some old wedding photos or uh, photos of your kids that back when it was printed 10 years ago, now the colour starts to look a bit strange, a bit funny. We crave things that last, permanence, solid foundations. There's a reason people say they don't make things like they used to. We're seeking something durable, something that can withstand the test of time, something that can promise us continuity and reliability in a time that just feels increasingly temporary. Well, that's where God steps in. God so loves the world, a world that hates him. God who so loves the world that he painfully gave his one and only son, Jesus. God who so loved the world that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is what we're exploring today, thinking through what it means and how it might affect us every day. So let's dive into this passage, mainly looking at John 3.16, but we have that Matthew passage as a bit of background for us in the back of our minds. So let's dive into it, ready to explore not just the promise of life without end, but the promise of a life that's so rich, so full, where every moment affects eternity itself. So let's discover how eternal life transforms not only how we view the future, but how we might live the present. So our first point is this, God is so generous. God is so generous. Now, John talks about this idea of eternal life, and, uh, and that's what Jesus talks about when he's having a chat with Nicodemus. But we need to think through what this eternal life is, and in particular, what he means by life. What does John mean? I think there's two big ideas that we see in John that capture it, so we're going to dive into those, and those two things are light and meaning. Life, meaning light and meaning. So let's start with this idea of life being light. John chapter 1 verse 4 says this, John chapter 1 verse 4, in him, in Jesus, John's talking about, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Jesus' life was the light of all mankind, or, or humankind, as modern English uh, says, to ensure clarity. And what could that mean? It's this idea that Jesus both has and offers a kind of life that makes true sense of the world. And don't get me wrong, we live in a confusing world. Here's a quote from a video I watched this week, talking about how the algorithms in Instagram or TikTok work. This is what uh, she says in the video. The algorithm is crazy because you'll see something so funny on here that you'll laugh out loud in your house. And in the very next video will be somebody telling you the saddest story you've ever heard in your entire life. And you'll just be emotionally wrecked for having gone on this journey with them. And it immediately will be a video of some dude just farting into a microphone. And then there'll be three sponsored ads and then some new trend that somehow everyone seems to know. And then you go to the next video and it's somebody indicting you for your lack of ignorance on some, uh, for your lack of action on some particular political issue. That's our world that we're living in. It's confusing. But Jesus' life is the light of all humankind. Just like how light allows us to see, Jesus allows us to see. He shows us the true nature of God himself. He says in John 14, verse 9, John 14, verse 9, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. As we look at Jesus, we come to understand God's character. He's loving, he's kind, gracious, he's just, and so much more. Jesus helps us see truth through his teachings. And through Jesus, we see how we should live. In particular, caring for the weak, the vulnerable, the ostracized, those on the outside, those on the fringes. Jesus says this when he prayed to his father, 
John chapter 17, verse 3. John 17, verse 3. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life, that they may know their God. C.S. Lewis says this. Uh, C.S. Lewis, a theologian, he says, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. So by life, John means truth. But he also talks about life being meaningful. This idea of that the life that Jesus gives is a life of meaning. Jesus says this in John 4 verse 14. John 4 verse 14. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Getting a bit thirsty thinking about it. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is feeling the same. Uh, the other night, I was, it was the end of a very long day. And I had to fill up my car because the next day was busy. And I was at 7-Eleven looking at the drinks and something caught my eye. Uh, I'll just see if I can go back. Oh, there we go. And I saw this drink there, liquid death. I thought this was some hardcore energy drink. It took me back to my early 20s where I used to drink energy drinks all the time. And no energy drink sounds more hardcore than liquid death, right? But I didn't need an energy drink at that time. I was, I was ready for bed. But when I looked closely, I don't know if you can see that up there. You can see it a little bit. It says mountain water. It's not an energy drink. It's mountain water in this kind of hardcore energy drink can. And it's called liquid death to kind of attract all these energy drink lovers to actually uh, give them something that's going to be kind of helpful for them, hydration. But you know what? I was kind of tempted to get it because I was thirsty and some nice mountain water sounded really enticing. But you know what? I didn't get it, but if I had, it would have satisfied my thirst somewhat. But I'll get thirsty again. Thirsty right now. Jesus offers the kind of water that when you drink it, you'll never thirst again. Now, of course, what he's talking about is a meaningful life. Not liquid death, liquid life. A kind of life where we're not just chasing the next thing, the next promotion, the next paycheck, the next holiday, the next thing, the next season of a show, the next car, the next delicious meal at, the re at a restaurant. These things, they come and they go. And we want them, and we get them, and then we want them again. Jesus says, stop. Be satisfied. Find true meaning in me. So when John talks about life, it often means these kind of two ideas, truth and meaning. So when you're offered eternal life, it isn't life that kind of just goes on, on, and on like we know it. It does, which is pretty awesome. And I had this kind of, in my draft, this idea of thinking through eternity and all the maths behind it, and it gets all very interesting, but it's a bit too boring, it takes too long. Uh, it does go on, and that is awesome, but it's so much more. It's a life of truth, a life of meaning. And it doesn't just begin one day in the future. If you trust Jesus, it begins here and now. That's a generous God. Generous God who offers that to anyone who believes in Jesus, who offers it to you today. But that leads us to our ne next point, the call to believe. The call to believe. So we have this eternal life on offer. All we've got to do is believe in Jesus. But what does it mean to believe in Jesus? We know that it's not just knowing facts about Jesus. We see in John chapter 5, verses 39 to 40, John 5, verses 39 to 40, Jesus, he's critiquing the religious leaders of the day, and he says this, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. You can't just know lots of Bible stuff. You can't just understand what Messiah means. 
You can't just have gone to Bible college and gone to some lecture where they talk about penal substitutionary atonement or the uh, perichoritic dance of the Trinity or these crazy theological concepts. You can't just know these things. James says in James chapter 2.19, you believe there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. No, to believe in Jesus means trusting him. It's a solemn commitment to follow him in your life no matter what. So that means that how you live and how you think and how you interact with those around you, all of these things transform. And secondly, you can't just believe one time and then just not change. For you this morning, if you were to look back over the last year or two, have you changed? Have you grown in your love of Jesus and those around you? Or do you look a little bit less like Jesus now? Thirdly, you can't just believe and then go on living in continuous, willful sin. Are you sleeping with your girlfriend or boyfriend? Or is gossiping, actually, when you think about it, your favourite thing to do? Or do you distance yourself from your growth group so that uh, hopefully you don't actually have to be accountable to anybody and talk about your sins? Fourthly, do you love people or do you just tolerate them? Do you love Jesus or are you kind of just indifferent towards him now? To believe and not change is to not believe at all. To believe and not change is to not believe at all. But maybe for you, you've never believed in Jesus before. Or maybe you've kind of thought about the idea, but you've never really taken that leap. You're kind of just checking him out. Maybe today you've been dragged here by someone else, clocking in for your Easter visit, and uh, maybe hopefully we'll get to see you at Christmas time or something like that. If you're any of these people who hasn't yet trusted in Jesus, uh, there's probably a few barriers to doing that. Lots that are common to uh, all kinds of people. Might be something like pride. And for you, you might think, you know, you're a pretty good person at a fundamental level. Somebody who doesn't really need to be saved. Maybe you love your autonomy and your independence. So the idea of handing over the keys to your life to someone like Jesus is, uh, and have him as the boss of your life, it's just a little bit too much. If that's you, know that you have limitations. You can't control everything as much as you try. As smart as you are, as many opportunities that might arise, you can't control everything. To follow Jesus means humbling yourself to the one who does control everything. Or maybe for you, your barrier is fear. Fear of change, the unknown, or the consequences that if you were to put your trust in Jesus, the consequences that that might bring to uh, your relationships with your loved ones. For you, sometimes fear can kind of sit in a sort of murky, threatening place. Sometimes just writing them down. I'm worried that if I put my trust in Jesus, that A, B, or C. Sometimes just writing it down, because once we can then name it, we can then start to think about it, we can start to attack it, start to think through ways to overcome it. Remember, believing in Jesus isn't a step into darkness, it's a step into light. Or maybe you just feel like you don't know, about, know enough about Jesus, and so for you, you're in the right place. There are Bibles all over the place. There are Christians everywhere. Lots of them know lots of things. They can explain things to you. Uh, there are Bible study groups, growth groups, people who are here to help you understand who Jesus is. And you can ask any question. We had this little group early in the year called Croissants and Queries, where people could just come along and bring their curliest, hardest questions. Because as Christians, if we truly believe that this is true, that uh, Jesus and, and what we read about in the Bible is kind of the, the bedrock, the foundation of all truth, then any question you bring isn't going to be too offensive or too hard to answer. We can look at the Bible and see what God has to say. No one can threaten Jesus. So those are our main two points. We've got God is so generous, offers us eternal life. And secondly, you must believe in Jesus. It's what we're called to do if we want that gift. 
Now we're on to our last point, which is actually also our conclusion and your challenge. Will you believe in him? Believing in Jesus transforms everything. It's like flipping on a switch in a dark room. Suddenly, you've got peace with God. You've got a brand new purpose. You've got a ticket to eternity that changes how you see every day right here, right now. What we see in today's passage is the solution to the frustration with the fleeting, things that just come and go. Instead, we're introduced to the concept of eternal life. But it's crucial to understand that this isn't just an extension of life as we know it now, but that sort of stretches endlessly into the horizon. It's a quality of life that's beyond our wildest dreams. It's a life that's characterized by an unbreakable connection with God himself who invites you into his life. And it's infused with a purpose that transcends our everyday concerns. And it's marked by peace. That's not subject to the ups and downs of worldly circumstances. Eternal life as presented in scripture uh, is, is filled with depth and richness. It's this life that's lived in color, full resolution, where every moment is imbued with meaning. And uh, not because... This life is so short and we're trying to make the most of every moment, but rather because it's anchored in something unshakable. It's about knowing and being known by the true and living God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. This is the life that truly satisfies our thirst for permanence, a life where love doesn't wilt, joy doesn't fade, and peace isn't disrupted by the next wave of change. We've all heard of incredible stories of people whose lives have changed and they believed in Jesus. We think about someone like the Apostle Paul. He's going around making sure Christians get killed and he gets knocked off his horse and his life completely gets turned around. There might be someone that you know or there might be people that you bump into at the coffee shop who found hope in places that you could never expect. They aren't just sort of random feel-good moments. The real life proof of someone who, uh, who takes that leap of faith when they believe in Jesus. Now for you this morning, what if today, right here, right now, you decided to take that step? It might be a quiet moment of reflection. Maybe you could say a heartfelt prayer. Maybe you could talk to someone near you to help you through something like that. Why not believe today? Maybe right now you're hearing this and your heart has kind of leapt a little bit. Maybe it's starting to pound. If that's, if that's you, then know that you're close. And if you do believe for the first time today, you're not alone, not even close. There are so many of us that have wrestled with doubts, questions, the big what ifs, what about this, what about that of faith. And guess what? It's okay. Those questions and things that you might have uh, are okay. It's part of the journey. My stepdad, he used to always say that he became a Christian when he was 40. Done a lot of things that he had regretted. And uh, one of his friends, when they heard that he had become a Christian, was like, oh, you're a Christian? Oh, so you probably just don't really need to think much anymore. And he kind of laughed and he said, since becoming a Christian, I have to think a lot more. I have to now start thinking about God and I have to read the Bible and I have to think about everything I do and my motivations and loving people and caring for people. All of these kinds of things, how God affects my work and my life and my family and my language, all these kinds of things. It's a journey uh, when we come to trust in Jesus, but we're not alone. But here's the deal. Believing in Jesus isn't just about saying a prayer and then just going back to business as usual. It's about living in light of what's been promised to us. It means making choices and building relationships that echo the hope and life that's been poured into us. It's about looking at the world not just as it is, with all its beautiful dolphins and uh, mountains and things, uh, but as all of those people who need to hear about Jesus, as it could be, as it should be. So whether you're on the edge of faith, Swimming in doubts, or maybe you're ready to dive back in, you're sort of coming back to God in a new way, there's a place for you. And as we think about living out this promise, remember, don't think about 
just doing it on your own. Let's do it together in community, caring for each other, praying for each other, encouraging each other to live lives that are lit up with hope and purpose that only comes from Jesus. So what do you say? Are you ready? Ready to live a life that's not just about getting through each day, but about making each day count for eternity? Let's do this. Let's live out this incredible promise together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Our Father, you are so kind and so good, and you just care about us so much, far beyond what words could describe or or capture. We know that you've given us your Son, You gave us your son who died for the world, for people who, like us, all of us, were rebelling against you, sinning against you. We thank you for Jesus. And we pray that today, that if we do trust Jesus, that you would help us to understand this in a whole new way, that eternity that's offered to us would affect living every day. And Father, for those of us here today who maybe might trust Jesus today and enter that eternal life of meaning, of truth, of hope and purpose. We pray that for those of us here that are on, in, in that uh, step and, and journey of our lives, we pray that you would strengthen us by your spirit, help us to trust Jesus each and every day, as hard as that might be, right to the end of time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The grave could not ignore it, all of heaven's roaring. Hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Please stand as we acknowledge this king that has saved us. There's a reason why the curse of sin is broken There's a reason why the darkness runs from light There's a reason why we stand here now forgiven Jesus is alive There's a reason why we are not overtaken
The death and not ignoring The heaven heavens roaring Thou where is your victory Death where is your sting The world could not ignore it When all the saints are glory Thou where is your victory Death where is your sting The grave could not Morning, everybody. My name's David. I'll be leading us in prayer this morning, and then we're going to sort of segue into the Lord's Prayer straight after that. So please bow your hearts as we as we pray to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we join with millions of your people around this time to reflect, remember, and celebrate all that was accomplished by the Lord Jesus. We cannot fathom what Jesus went through on that day and in the time leading up to his cruel death. What courage he showed to enter a city knowing that he was going to be killed there. Not only do we think of that gruesome day when he was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, but we also reflect on the perfect life lived and the perfect example set for us. Somehow this was part of your amazing plan to redeem mankind. Because three days later, the glorious resurrection took place and is what we celebrate today. And this fact is where our hope lies, that one day too, we'll be resurrected to eternal life in him. If Jesus was not raised, we are dead in our sin. May we reflect on the amazing simplicity of the gospel as outlined in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel by which we are saved, simply by believing. For many around us in Maroubra and our wider city, this time of year is nothing more than an extra long weekend and opportunity for holidays and reveling. We understand from your word that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own des evil desires. Scoffing not only at his first coming, but also at the promise he will surely one day return. Help us to reach out to those around us who may be seeking some meaning from the emptiness that this world offers in life apart from you. As we take time to enjoy some rest, may we be sensitive to opportunities that present and be ready to give an account for the hope that is in us. Thanks that we are seeing many responding to you at St John's. Help us to be a welcoming and encouraging church to folks who you bring into this fellowship. Help us to continue to encourage and teach those who have recently come to faith that they may be on guard against the wiles of the evil one for we are not unaware of his schemes. Help us to also consider what role we might have in serving you in whatever gifting it is you have given. May your children here today offer ourselves each day as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to you, which is our true and proper worship. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks for praying, Dave. Uh, really wonderful to have you join us this morning. Welcome to St. John's. If you are new or newish, or maybe you have been away for a while and you're keen to get back plugged into the community, we'd love you to grab one of these little welcome cards. Owen's going to do a little walk through the middle here. Um, and if you are new, or maybe if you've brought some along and you want to sort of dob them in, raise your hand. Owen can give you a card. You can fill out these details. Fill out your name, uh, and if you're keen, you can write your number and your email. And someone can get in contact with you and help you get plugged in here at St. John's. Maybe for you, you now trust Jesus for the first time, and you're like, where do I go? What do I do from here? If that's you, we'd love to hear from you. Write that down on your card, and you can pop that in the box at the back, just under where it says, be gospel generous. Speaking of being gospel generous, uh, I want to just thank you so much for partnering with the ministry here, if you are already. And if you haven't yet, you can get started on our church website. There is a link that um, you can scan this QR code here, or if you just go to our website, you can look at uh, how you can think through how financially you can partner with what's going on here and see it continue for many years to come. But if you don't feel comfortable, if that's not your thing, or if it's beyond your means, no pressure whatsoever. Uh, God is very wealthy, so... Uh, uh, he invites you to be a partner on his mission of saving people here in Maroubra. We're going to sing our last song. It's called Mighty to Save. And this is a wonderful song because to save someone often can be really hard and really costly. And it was for God. Yet he did it. And he did it for you. He did it for me. So let's stand and sing about our God who is mighty to save.
Thank you very much for spending uh, the morning with us and uh, having the opportunity together to reflect on what Jesus has done for us in coming and dying on the cross and rising triumphantly from the grave on the third day. We've been encouraged to think about what he has done. Uh, we've been challenged to think about our belief, the fact that belief is not just about here, but about here and that it moves us to our hands, our heart, our, our speech, what we see, what we say, and how we live. Uh, so there's the challenge for all of us to go and to think about that and reflect on it and to live changed lives, lives that uh, are praising the glory of our risen King. Uh, let's say the last words. Uh, uh, children, yes, if you've got children, please go and collect them. Don't leave them here, um, particularly as they're full of Easter eggs and chocolate and will be hyper, so uh, you can thank us for that and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.